Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to record our first instruction into the command buffer. It's going to be the clear instruction. Unfortunately, by the end of this video, you will not be able to actually see the window cleared because we still need to submit the command into a queue, into a Vulkan queue, uh, which is pretty big operation in itself. So this will be done in the next video. But still, this is our first instruction to be recorded, so it's a reason for a small celebration. Okay, so most of the changes today will be on the application side. So we have a new tutorial here, a new project, number 9. And in the init function, after creating the command buffers, I've added a function called record command buffers, which is here. Now, I'd like to stress the fact that everything that we're doing here today is an offline operation, okay? It's not part of the regular execution cycle of the application. It's not part of the main render loop. Okay, so if we compare it to the first tutorial in OpenGL, right here we have the main render function which begins with the GL clear call, okay? So on every iteration through the render function, we have to call GL clear in order to clear the window. Now this in itself may not seem like a lot, but remember that the driver doesn't know that we're going to do that. It cannot assume that uh, each iteration is going to be like the previous one. It's not aware of that. So it has to perform all the driver work again on each iteration. Now in the case of the clear instruction, it may actually not be a lot, like just flipping a bit somewhere, but usually, things are not as simple as that and you need to collect all kinds of state around it and there are many other instructions beyond clear which may incur a lot of driver overhead which we want to prevent. So what we're doing in Vulkan is basically to prepare the frame or as much of the frame up front. So the main function call here is this one vkcmd clear color image. As we discussed in the previous video all the recording instruction begin with this prefix, vkcmd. Okay, so in this case, we are clearing the color image. As you can see, this function is inside a loop that goes over all the command buffers. This is a vector of command buffers. And remember that we resized it for all the images in the swap chain. Okay, we need a command buffer per swap chain image. So the first parameter is the handle of the command buffer from the vector. Next, we have the corresponding image handle that we're fetching from the Vulkan core class. This guy stores the swap chain as well as the images. So we can simply uh, get it from here. As you can see, this function returns a VK image. Next, we have the image layout. Now in general, the layout specifies the way that the pixels are packed together inside the actual memory of the image. For example, one simple option would be to just throw them one after the other, like RGB, RGB, RGB. And another option is to pack them together as groups of components of the same channel. So for example, four red channels, followed by four green channels, followed by four blue channels. The reason for the layout is usually performance. Each uh, GPU may perform better using different layouts on different stages of the pipeline, depending on the type of the operation that it needs to do. Now, the actual layout is not exposed to the developer because it is so GPU specific. So what we have instead are simply names that describe the different layouts. As you can see in the VK image enum, we have undefined, okay? So we don't know the layout in this case. Another option is color attachment optimal. Okay, so it is optimized for the color attachment. Uh, same thing with the depth, uh, depth stencil, shader read only, and etc. Now, if we take a look at the description of this function, we can see that the layout in this case can only be either layout shared present or general or transfer destination optimal. So for this first example, it seems safe to use a layout general, which is what we're doing here. Next, we have the address of the clear color. And for that, we have something called VK clear color value, which is actually a union 
of either four floating points or four signed 32-bit integers or four unsigned 32-bit integers. I prefer to use floating points here, so I've set this to be 1000, which is red, of course. Now remember that in OpenGL we actually need two function calls for that. First we have GL clear color to set the color, and then we have GL clear that performs the operation. So in this case everything is packed into the same function. And finally we need to specify the subset of the image that we want to clear in terms of the MIP levels and the layers, the array layers. So what we have here is the address of an array of image sub-resource range structures and the number of elements in that array. In this case, just a single element, so this is what we have here. First of all, we have the aspect mask that tells us the part of the image that we want to clear in terms of color, depth, stencil, uh, etc. This can be a bit mask of those. In our case, we just want to clear the color buffer. And then we have the MIP maps and the array layers. Now you should be familiar with MIP mapping in OpenGL. And if not, I have a video about that. So in general, an image or a texture may have multiple MIP maps. But in this case, we just have one MIP map level. So we set the base to be zero and the number of layers to be one. In addition to that, an image may actually be an array. So we have multiple array layers. But again, in this case, we just have one array layer. So we set the base to be zero and the layer count to be one. So in general, if you have an image with multiple MIP map levels and multiple array layers, you can slice it up by using an array of structures here. So this function records the clear instruction into the command buffer. But remember from the previous video, you can't just call it outright. Before you start recording, you need to call VK begin command buffer to kind of start the process of recording. And after you finish recording, you need to call VK end command buffer. So this function is very simple. It just takes the handle of the command buffer, but calling the corresponding begin command buffer function is a bit more complex. So I've created a wrapper function for that. This function is declared in a new header file called um, OGL dev Vulcan wrapper.h, which right now just includes a single function, begin command buffer. As you can see, it's part of the namespace OGL dev VK, which is the namespace for all the functions in the Vulcan core project. You don't have to work in the same manner, but I like to be able to visually separate between functions on the application side and functions that belong to the Vulcan core project. So this function takes the handle of the command buffer and something which is called the command buffer usage flags. The implementation of this function is inside wrapper.cpp. So this is the wrapper, begin command buffer, and the actual Vulkan API is of course vk begin command buffer. This function takes the command buffer handle that we got here. And as usual in Vulkan, we have the address of some info structure. In this case, command buffer begin info. So we have the usual boilerplate stuff. The key thing here is the flags, or actually the usage flags. This tells the driver how the command buffer is going to be used. So we have three options here. One time submit, which means that each recording of the command buffer will only be submitted once and then the command buffer will be reset and recorded again between each submission. Next, we have render pass continue, which specifies that the secondary command buffer is considered to be entirely inside the render pass. Now, we haven't talked about render passes yet, so let's just leave it for now. And finally, we have simultaneous use, which specifies that the command buffer can be resubmitted to any queue of the same queue family while it is in the pending state and recorded into multiple primary command buffers. So we actually don't need any of these usage options at this stage. So when calling the wrapper, we pass zero here. Now VK begin command buffer can fail. So we check the error code here and exit if there's any error. So right now this may seem like a bit of an overhead, 
But remember that we're going to have more instructions here, specifically draw instructions. So we expect to have multiple recording functions here wrapped inside a single begin and an end. And that's it for today. As I said, in the next video, we're going to submit the command buffer into a queue and see how it executes. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.